Hey everyone, it's John Velasco for PhoneRena.com. Today I'm doing an in-depth video review of the Samsung Replenish, which is an eco-friendly device constructed out of some uh, recycled plastics. It's going to be available shortly for $50 on contract. And the other unique thing about it, it's one of the few devices to sport a, a portrait-style QWERTY form factor. Surprisingly, the Replenish is a pretty hefty device when we compare it to some other devices packing landscape style QWERTY keyboards. Still though, it's manageable to hold in the hand. It's a little bit on the long and narrow side. It's constructed out of uh, recycled plastic. Uh, it does give it a little bit cheap feel to it, but nonetheless, you're going to save the environment with it. On top of that, it's complemented with this chrome trim all around the device, which does give it a little bit of character. Overall though, the design is pretty decent. Seeing that it's an entry-level smartphone, it doesn't surprise us to find a 2.8-inch QVGA display on the device. Um, so that's 240 by 320 pixels, and honestly, it can look a little bit on the pixelated side. It's not as sharp looking as we'd like. On top of that, color production's on the bland side, and at various viewing angles, it kind of washes out as well. Fortunately, we're agreed to some physical Android buttons, so we rarely accidentally press them. With a the portrait-style QWERTY keyboard, they kind of follow the BlackBerry route. The thing that we like about it is that they're kind of bubbled towards the middle, so you get a good feel for them. On top of that, they exhibit a really nice tactile response when you use them, so you know what they're pressing. Unfortunately, though, they're kind of cramped, so people with larger fingers will probably have a little bit of a hard time using it. On the left side of the device, we have a sufficiently sized volume rocker and provides a really nice response when you press it down. You also have a spot here for a lanyard. Meanwhile, on the right, we have a dedicated shutter key. It's only a single level, and you also have the uh, voice command button. On the top side, we have a 3.5mm headset jack, a dedicated power button, which is raised and has a really nice response. And at the bottom, you just simply have the micro USB port and the microphone. Finally, in the back, you have the 2 megapixel camera, which is only a fixed focus one, the notch here for the speakerphone, and removing the back cover, it's going to give you access to its battery and the 2 gigabyte micro SD card. Now for a device that's packing a 600 megahertz processor with 512 megabytes of RAM, the uh, operation is pretty quick and fluid. We're happy with the overall speed. Um, it does, uh, doesn't seem too laggy. It's fairly responsive, as you can tell, as we're just navigating across the home screen. For other basic operations, like kinetic scrolling, launching applications, it gets the job done. Besides Sprint's ID service layer on top of the uh, platform, which allows you to download additional themes for the device, it's mostly a stock Android 2.2 Froyo experience, so there's a lot of personalization aspects with it. You could choose different widgets, um, so far from the ones that we've checked out. They're pretty much the stock ones that you find in other handsets. On top of that, you have also different wallpapers you could choose, from a static one to even a live wallpaper, which is surprising just because of the slower processor. Still, you have an arsenal of different personalization aspects at your disposal. Naturally, the physical keyboard offers the best typing experience just because it's pretty quick and easy. Um, you also have an option to use the landscape one. There's no on-screen portrait option, but there is one for the landscape. Uh, it is pretty responsive, for, luckily, but it's very cramped. It makes it very difficult for people with larger fingers. Being the Android handset it is, the Gmail experience is pretty fantastic, just like others out there. You have your rich set of features such as thread view and even labeling. If you're going to use other clients aside from Gmail, the setup is pretty simple. It generally requires your email address and password, and 9 and 10 times, it'll automatically will set up. You've got the stock Android Music Player on board with the Samsung Replenish, and it's more than functional, of course. As far as the audio quality from the speaker, it's surprisingly, it's pretty, uh, pretty good. It's not irritating to the ear, especially at the loudest volume setting. We don't hear any crackling or any distortion. Interestingly enough, we're able to load up a video encoded in MPEG-4 800x480 resolution with the device, and surprisingly enough, it's not, it's not uh, being choppy at all in its playback. Unfortunately though, because of its low quality display, colors look like on the, bl on the bland side, and you can only play videos in landscape, there's no portrait support. Even though it's unable to display flash content, the web browsing experience is still pretty good with the Samsung Replenish. Pages load up in a good amount of time. Yes, the QVJ display makes it very hard to look at text, but zooming in shouldn't be too much of a problem. You probably have to zoom in even further to get a really good clarity with it. But you can tell with the kinetic scrolling, it's pretty smooth and pinch gestures are responsive. So either way, the web browsing experience is still pretty good with it. Sadly though, the Replenish isn't the best thing to take shots with its 2 megapixel camera just because in outdoor conditions and good lighting, it produces some muddy looking visuals. And on top of that, color is a little bit on the bland side. Indoors, low lighting conditions, uh, there's just a huge amount of digital noise evident, which does reduce its quality overall. Even worse is the handset's ability to shoot videos just because with its quality, it's very muddy looking, pixelated, on top of that, not sharp at all. Uh, it does have a choppiness to it, and the auto recording is a little bit on the muffled side. 
When it comes to calling quality, we're very happy with the Samsung Replenish just because the voices on both ends of the line are very distinct and clear, no distortion whatsoever. And with the earpiece, it's very strong, so it's quite audible. Unfortunately, though, when we use the speakerphone, though, it is strong in its output, but voices are muffled sounding. In our experience, the Replenish manages to retain a good amount of signal strength to the network. It didn't drop any calls during our time with it. Additionally, we're content with the handset's battery life just because after fully charging it, we're able to get out a day and a half of normal usage, which may only consist of text messaging, web browsing, and even an occasional phone call. So overall, we're pretty content with the Samsung Replenish just because it's a pretty decent device. Uh, although it might not take the best photos and videos out there, you get a reasonable Android 2.2 Froyo experience. It moves at a pretty good rate. It's one of the few devices to support a portrait-style QWERTY keyboard. Although it might feel like on a cheap side, uh, you are saving the environment just because of the recycled plastics that it uses. Additionally, you could purchase additional accessories such as the solar back cover, which recharges the battery in the, in the sunlight. On top of that, uh, Sprint is waiving the usual $10 per month premium data package that are required for most of its Android smartphones, so you are getting some money back to your pockets. So if you'd like to learn more about the Samsung Replenish or for all latest cell phone reviews, news, specs, and information, you can check us out, phonerena.com.